There's something else you should know about marriage. Whoa. Number one, the Quran allows men to have more than one wife. Then marry such women as seem good to you, two and three and four. But if you fear that you will not do justice between them, then marry only one. A Muslim man is allowed to marry up to four women, but if he's afraid he won't do justice between them, he should marry only one. While it is allowed, the general guidance stipulated by the Quran and a hadith may be the reason why most Muslim men choose to only have one wife. You poor creatures. Number two, humans as a species are polygamous by nature. But we're not animals. Animals do all sorts of things that are disgusting. Although we are kind of animals, with one glaring exception that differentiates us from all the other things on earth which move around, breathe, eat, sleep, grow, excrete and reproduce. And that is the aql, loosely translated as the intellect. The Holy Quran tells us, And there is no animal that walks upon the earth, nor a bird that flies with its two wings, but that they are genera or communities like yourselves. Now being the rational animal that we are, let's attempt to use that intellect to observe the other species on our planet to figure out whether the natural design of human beings is to be monogamous or not. Scientists have studied 5,000 species of mammals and found that only 3 to 5 percent are known to form lifelong bonds with one mate. One researcher highlights that humans in fact possess certain characteristics typical of non-monogamous species. Monogamous species are also monomorphic, meaning that both males and females are the same size. Polygamous species are dimorphic. The male is larger than the female. And in humans, males are typically 10% taller and 20% heavier than females. And it seems that humans have been mildly polygamous throughout history. Islam is a religion which is based on the fitrah, the natural disposition of humankind. That's why the Holy Quran states, so direct your face towards the religion, inclining to truth, the nature made by Allah in which he has made men. There is no altering of Allah's creation. That is the right religion, but most people do not know. Number three, society has forced us to remain monogamous largely because of jealousy. University professor David P. Brash argues that perhaps what makes human beings special is our ability to do things that are unnatural, whether those things are obsolete or, like monogamy, are socially imposed. And if you just think about that for a moment, in our strictly monogamous society where having more than one wife is seen as some sort of heinous and unforgivable crime, generally a lot of well-to-do men have affairs or divorce their wives and marry younger women, sometimes more than once, i.e. serial polygyny. This may be why Dr. Elizabeth Sheff argues that it seems more natural for humans to want a personal harem but insist on sexual exclusivity for our lovers so we don't have to deal with jealousy. A harem is a term which in biology is generally used to describe a group of females sharing one mate, like a group of lionesses or does that one lion or one stag protects. This social construct actually makes more sense for humans, but many women insist on their men being exclusive in order to avoid jealousy. While it may be difficult for us to digest, the reality is that this is a kind of jealous possessiveness which in Islam, men are encouraged to have and women are encouraged not to have. This may be the wisdom behind Imam Ali's words when he said that the wife's jealousy is from disbelief and the husband's jealousy is from faith. Number four, men are psychologically designed to have multiple spices. Spouses. Now I know a lot of women hearing this will get angry and even a lot of men hearing this will be like, hey, I'm not like that. Let's just step back a minute and look at this objectively for a moment. In Finland, over 12,000 men and women aged 18 to 49 were surveyed in an attempt to find out which age group they were most attracted to. Most women tended to be interested in men who were the same age or slightly older. Most men, however, tended to be interested in a single age group, women in their mid-twenties. Meaning that if you take a couple where the man is 40 and the woman is 35, the woman will be content as long as her general needs are being met. The man, however, even if all his needs are generally being met, on some level of his consciousness, he will be on the lookout for a younger woman. Generally speaking, scientists argue that this is because women in their mid-twenties are most fertile and men are instinctively on the lookout to have more offspring. We have to consider that men are naturally more prone to having extra partners. Number five, women 
on the other hand, are not designed to have more than one spouse. If a man has multiple wives, it's clear who the child belongs to. But if a woman has multiple husbands, determining who the child actually belongs to becomes a serious problem. Modern DNA sampling could potentially help, yes, but we have to bear in mind that Islam is a religion for all times and all places. Nay, if men can have more than one spouse, then women should be allowed to have more than one spouse too. Equal rights. But what about the psychological effects multiple partners have on women? In fact, one study established a strong association between number of sex partners and later substance disorder, especially for women, which persisted beyond prior substance use and mental health problems more generally. In fact, studies have found that women who have multiple partners are at higher risk of being infertile. Without going into too many details, it is not the natural design of a woman to have multiple partners. Number six, the male to female ratio. Today, there are more men in the world than women. More males are born than females. Scary, isn't it? Now, here's a map. The red areas are countries where women outnumber men. But hold on a moment. What about these countries? I mean, what is going on there? According to World Atlas, in the United Arab Emirates, the high number of men compared to women is attributed to a large number of foreign workers who leave their families back in their home countries. Furthermore, in today's world, it can be argued that men outnumber women for rather unnatural reasons. For the World Health Organization has stated, societies with a dominating preference for male children tend to intervene in nature and reduce the number of born girl children by sex-selective abortion and infanticide. And the Holy Quran states, and do not slay your children for fear of poverty. We provide for you and for them. Stop killing female children. And the Holy Quran further states that on the day of judgment, when the female infant buried alive is asked, for what sin was she killed? If such atrocities were not taking place, then it's likely that the women would outnumber the men and the surplus women deserve to marry even if all the men are married already. Now, if you look at a country like the USA, there were 161 million females in 2013 versus only 156.1 million males. That means that if every man got married, there'd still be 4.9 million women without life partners. Similarly, according to the UK government website, only 49% of the population is male. If all the males got hitched to one woman each, there'd still be 1.32 million women unmarried. 53.53% of Russia is female, leaving over 10 million single women if every man got taken. What are all these women supposed to do? Should they A, engage in adultery with married men, or B, remain celibate for their entire lives. Islam says that, hey, neither of these options are fair on women. Neither are they good and healthy for society. Adultery causes pain and anguish, while celibacy forces women to live their lives without having experienced the pains, pleasures, and progress of married life. Thus, it's better if the surplus women enter into loving, caring, and wholesome marriages to men, even if those men already have another wife or wives. Number seven. Expendability. Women are special, and while modern society tries to adamantly insist that they are equal and not different in any way, the Holy Quran eloquently throws this argument to the wayside with a single line. And the male is not like the female. The female has the ability to create and nurture life, an ability that Allah gave only to her and not to him. It's this ability that sets her apart, makes her special, and it's because of this ability which men lack that men are expendable. If there's a village, the men will naturally do all the dangerous things. If the worst happens and the men all die, then it's okay. Pregnant women will have children. The women can still hunt and gather for themselves and nurture and raise the next generation. If, on the other hand, a village gives all the dangerous tasks to the women and the women die, that's it. That's the end of the village. What are the men gonna do? Hunt and gather food? For what? For who? Once they reach old age and die, that's the end of them. And if all humans did this, then that's the end of the species. <laughs> While women produce more antibodies and at a quicker rate than men, and have more white blood cells and develop fewer infectious diseases, etc., men are naturally stronger and taller than women and do not have the burden of the menstrual cycle nor of childbearing in the womb. And the Holy Quran says, men are the protectors and maintainers of women because Allah has given the one more strength than the other. Thus, men are the natural option when it comes 
comes to who should do the hazardous job. This looks like a job for Mr. Expendable. In fact, according to scientists, this is the reason why more males are born than females. The World Health Organization notes that nature provides that the number of newborn males slightly outnumber newborn females because as they grow up, men are at a higher risk of dying than women. According to an article by Jamie Garbutt, male mortality is 25 to 30% greater than is female mortality. You're more likely to die at a young age if you're male. Not only due to sex differentials in natural death rates, but also due to higher risk from external causes. Accidents, injuries, violence, war casualties, etc. In the event of war, men will die. And a society will be left with overwhelming numbers of women who have nobody left to marry. It will create a surplus of widows and single mothers, while there is a shortage of single men. Should these women now remain single until they die? Hmm. Well, why can't the surplus women just remain unmarried? Why do we have to consider this whole polygyny malarkey? Well, number eight. The more unmarried people there are, the more sexual sins increase. In an ideal society, everyone gets hitched, which is why Islam has put so much significance on the concept of marriage. Watch the video. Generally speaking, the more single people there are in society, the more that society will be prone to all sorts of social ills and sins, like pornography, adultery, fornication, pedophilia, and even rape. The country with the highest number of rapes in the world in 2010 was America, with a whopping 84,000 1767 recorded offenses. It's really no surprise that the country has 110.6 million unmarried people aged 18 and older in 2016. That's over 45% of the over 18s in America that are unmarried. In second place was South Africa where there were over 48,000 rapes. And in third place was India with a staggering 22,172 recorded offenses. It has been reported that over the past decade there has been a 39% increase in single women in India. That's 71 million single women above the age of 20. That's more than the entire population of the UK. Now, when it comes to viewing explicit material online, according to Bustle, the fourth biggest consumer of pornography in 2015 was India. Canada came third, the UK came second, and lo and behold, America came first. When it comes to pedophilia, Catholic priests insist on remaining celibate and not getting married. Forget about having multiple wives. If you want to reach God, you shouldn't even have one wife. Boom, you've got a whole load more unmarried people. July 2014, Pope Francis declared that 8,000 Catholic clergy, including bishops and cardinals, were pedophiles. Children are being abused in the name of celibacy all over the world. On top of that, a lot of this abuse is homosexual in nature. According to the John Jay report, 80.9% of the abuse victims in the United States were male children. And remember, these are just the cases that we hear about because most of the time, such sexual crimes go unreported. Am I saying that married people don't commit such crimes? No, but there is certainly a tangible correlation between the number of unmarried people and a lack of sexual ethics. This may be part of the wisdom behind the words of the Holy Prophet who said, the worst ones from among your dead are the single people. Marriage, good, single, bad. Even if some men have multiple wives. Number nine, it's about protecting and preserving women. A marriage is a legal binding contract. A woman married to a man will be given rights to inheritance, for example. Children born in the relationship will be cared for by the father. He is not allowed to abandon them, giving the family a sense of security in their lives. And it is binding on the man to provide food, clothing, and shelter for her, and to further never make her feel insignificant. The Holy Prophet said, the right of a woman on her husband is that he feeds her, clothes her, and does not cause her to lose face by insulting her her or chiding her. In a society where Islam is taken as the ideal, second, third, and fourth wives are not seen as secondary citizens or concubines, rather they are given all the respect and rights of a woman in a marriage with a man. Number 10. Many of the prophets, messengers, and imams had multiple wives. Prophets like Abraham, David, and Moses had more than one wife. Prophet Solomon, according to some, had many, many, many wives. In the Old Testament, many important figures are said to have more than one wife. Prophet Muhammad himself had multiple wives, as did Imam Ali, the first imam and the fourth khalif. And many, if not most of the revered figures of Islamic history had more than one wife. And you might argue that, well, that was a different time and society is different now. Well, maybe. Society needs to change. Once you're done either hating or loving this video, please do share it so that others can learn to love and hate as well.